Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about a more abstract topic and that is pruning your argument values. So there was a question in our Slack channel recently on how you could create a generalized method to prune string arguments. In today's episode, I will show you how to rewrite argument values in the middleware. By the way, we are running workshops at conferences throughout the next year. So if you want to spend two days with Martin and me diving deep into GraphQL topics and learning all about GraphQL, Hot Chocolate and Relay, join us. You can find the next dates for our conferences on the Chili Cream site under trainings. I put the links into the description of this video. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. So I already created a small API here. It's based on our books and authors as example. And if we look at the schema reference here and go to the mutation type, we can see that we have a create book mutation. And this mutation has an argument input here. And uh, the input is a create book input, which essentially has an author and a title. And I can write here the mutation. And if I execute that, we get the created book here. But what if I have spaces here, like a lot of random spaces, and also maybe on the author, get rid of the dot here, and then re-execute that. So you can see I get all these unnecessary spaces in there. And if I wanted to get rid of these, clean these, I could do that in the resolver, but then I had to re-implement that for all my resolvers. So we're gonna fix that and make it easy to apply that to each of your mutations. And then you don't have all the work of pruning all the string arguments everywhere. And this could also apply to other argument types like objects, lists, or ins, or what have you. So let's dive into some code. So I'm going here to the project I have already created. And if I look at the types, you can see we have the mutation type here. And at the moment, we just have one resolver here. And what is striking here is we don't have an input like in my GraphQL schema, we actually have directly these two arguments. And that's because we are using the mutation conventions here. And Hot Chocolate really rewrites the mutation structure to fit to the GraphQL best practices. I have a video on that. So if you want to learn all about mutation conventions, then head over to the mutation conventions video. And I posted a link in the video description. So why I'm saying that is actually the mutation conventions use the same helper method on the middleware context that we're going to use to rewrite the structure of the argument. So mutation conventions essentially rewrite the type system a bit and then also rewrite the middleware pipeline for our field here to essentially copy these two arguments back to their normal structure from the input object. So we're going to create now a middleware that cleans up the fields here. So the first thing to have a middleware and uh, packages in an attribute we're going to create an object field descriptor attribute. And an uh, object field descriptor attribute is able to rewrite the configuration of fields that we annotate this attribute to. I have created here this trim string args attribute, which implements the object field descriptor attribute. And we have here this onConfigure method that we're going to override. And there we will put our configuration logic. Let's move that actually into its separate class here. And then we're going to implement it. So in order to create a middleware or apply a middleware to our field, we are using the descriptor and then we will use the use descriptor. And this is a typical middleware structure here where we have next and context. And if you want to learn all about middlewares in Hot Chocolate, I have another video which explains all around middlewares. I also put the link to that video in the description of this video. So head over there if you want to deep dive into middlewares. So the first thing we put in here is the next and into next we pass the context and then we're going to await this. And next here will execute the rest of the pipeline. So what we want to do is actually first rewrite our arguments so that the rest of the pipeline can then execute on these cleaned up arguments. And we actually already have in Hot Chocolate 12 two helper methods here, which are called replace argument to replace a single argument or replace arguments. But we actually introduced a new helper method here that makes it even simpler. So I'm using the replace arguments here and I'm gonna use the one that we have now in Hot Chocolate 13. 
So the version in Hot Chocolate 13 lets me pass in a delegate here. And the delegate has an argument called current. So the middleware context will pass us the current map of arguments into this delegate. And then we can create a new map based on the current map. I have created here a new dictionary, string argument value. This is our new map. And now we're going to create this map or fill up this map from our current dictionary that we get passed in. The easiest way for that is to create a for each. And in this case, we are only interested in the values here. So the argument value. And let's actually have a look at the argument value. So I'm diving in here. And what you can see is that argument value actually implements an I input field info. And that means that this argument has a minimal set of information about the actual argument for which this argument value is meant for. So we have the type of the argument, we have the runtime type of the argument and some other things. We also have some metadata around this argument value, which says is fully coerced. And that is something from the GraphQL spec, there is a coercion algorithm, which coerces the raw argument value to the actual runtime value. And then we have here an indicator if this argument has errors. So when we compile the GraphQL request, we already do some statical analysis. And sometimes we already can figure out some errors here. And then we pass them into the argument value. And so that this can then explode in the field context. We also have an indicator if this is a default value. And then we have here the value literal, and that is the raw argument value, if you will. And this is the coerced runtime value. So sometimes the operation compiler can already fully coerce this value and store that with the compiled operation. In this case, this argument would be fully coerced. Okay, let's go back to our attribute and then write up some logic. So we want to deal with strings. And what we can do here is take the argument value and we could match, for instance, on the type. So we could say if this type and we could unwrap it with name type, then we get the most inner type construct here. So if you have a list type, for instance, then we would have list type at the outer type and the inner type of the list would be then maybe something else could be another list or could be a name type. But always the most inner type is a name type. And we could do a comparison here if this type is, for instance, a string type. We could check that with a simple string here. We also could check if it's the string type class that we use here. But I'm actually not going for the GraphQL type. I will go for the runtime type here. So even if you use semantic scalars, which are string types that maybe are aliased to reflect the semantics behind that argument, we would have the runtime type be string here. So we're going to use the runtime type here. Say If it's string, then we want to trim this argument. The second thing to our condition is actually if this argument value has a value literal, that is a string value. In Hot Chocolate, we have these value literals and string value represents non-nullable string values. So if this were to be a null value, then it would be a null value now. And if we had an error on our argument, this actually would be null. So the real null, the .NET null. So if we ask here for the string value node, we only get string values. So strings that really have a string value could be an empty string. So now we want to transform that. And these string literals are actually immutable. But they have these with methods here. And we can say we want this string with a different value here. And then we could take our string value, take the inner value and trim it. With that done, we could recreate a new argument value. And then the argument value wants here an input field info. And as we already saw, the argument value already implements that. And I would have here a problem that is actually the rewritten arc. And then we can reuse this one pass it into our argument value, and then all the metadata is copied over from the original value. Okay, then we are still a string, so we haven't changed anything. The value kind, and that means the value literal kind here, is a string still. And in this case, we are no longer fully coerced, so we indicate to the resolver pipeline that we need some coercion before this is applied to our field. We are also no longer the default value, even if the original were the default value, we are trimming it now, right? So it's not the default value afterwards. Then we don't pass in a runtime value. 
So we don't want to deal with the formatting. There could be other middlewares that maybe want to do something with that. So we don't go and prematurely coerce that here. We let the runtime do it. And then we just pass in the new string value that we have. Let's reformat that. All right. And now we can just add that to our new map. And with that, we have essentially our argument value clean. But we have to do one more thing here and that add an else clause. And in there, we just pass the argument as is to our argument map because we didn't do anything to it. All right, with this, we actually rewrote the argument, but there's one more thing to it. This replace argument returns as the original argument map. And this is important to capture the original arguments because we are rewriting the argument values. Then we execute the, the rest of the pipeline. But after that, we want to restore that because middlewares that came before us might expect the original argument structure or values. This is the exact same thing that the mutation convention does. So first we rewrite this, then we execute the pipeline, and then we restore it. You can think of that as like a scope. So the rest of the execution is scoped to the rewritten argument values here. Awesome. With this, we actually can use this attribute. Go to our mutation here, annotate that, and then our server should already rebuild. And we can rerun that. And you can see now they are pruned, they are clean. There's one more thing, and I'm not going to walk you through it, but I want to hint at least. So this is easy for scalers, right? because scalars are flat. But as soon as you're dealing with objects, this value kind, or if you deal with lists or whatever, then this actually is a bit more complicated and you would need to implement something like a rewriter. And we actually have base classes for that. So you could create a new class here and this class can then rewrite these literals. We could, for instance, say rewrite enum value here or other things. And the way this works is like we get in the original value, then we could rewrite this value and return it. If we return null, it means we are deleting it, but we also could return a new value here. And this rewriter then could be applied on this more complex value literal here. Essentially, we would create a rewriter here. And since it's stateless, so a rewriter is always stateless, you could actually cache it. There's no need to create new instances here. And then we could rewrite it. Like we could actually just take this raw thing here, yeah? rewrite it, and we would get a new value out of here. But showing you really how to do such a rewriter is a whole new episode. And I'm going to touch on rewriters and visitors in a later episode. Another aspect around this, and I also will show you this in an episode coming out next week about type interceptors, is a way to automatically identify all these mutation fields and then automatically apply this middleware to it, essentially eradicating the need for the attribute. I hope this video showed you something new around how you can customize hot chocolate to your needs. As always, there are multiple more avenues that you can take from here. As I already hinted, we could enhance that with type interceptors or rewriters or object trees that you pass into your mutation. So depending on what you're going for, this can become more or less complex. So what do you think of replacing arguments on your fields? Sound off in the comments. And if you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps our project to grow. With this, I'm out.